Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're getting ready to finish up that bench. If you missed that bench video, I'll have a link to it at the end of this one, but it was a bench carving tutorial where we created this freestanding bench using no, no glue, no nails, no screws, no nothing. And I give an explanation for that in that video, so be sure to go there so you guys can check that whole thing out and I'll walk you through how to create this. Today, like I said, we're gonna be finishing this bench and I'm kinda just gonna give you guys some ideas for finishing your bench. Um, how I'm going to do it, and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a good time. So be sure to stick around, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and don't go anywhere. So let's start with a rundown of the tools. Now, because I didn't finish all my chainsaw work the other day, I'm going to have to use my saw. What I'm going to do with this saw is cut these pieces a little bit shorter, okay? I want those a little bit shorter so there's not so much wasted space and you can see more of the backrest. Alright, so we need a saw, if you didn't do that the other day. I'm going to use a marker. Why am I using a marker instead of the red crayon? Because I want to be able to draw some artwork on the back and it comes out a little bit nicer with a black sharpie. You want your dust mask ear protection. Now normally once I do the artwork I carve it out using my router in a bit but I know a lot of you watching are using your die grinders and saber tooth flame bits so we're gonna use the three quarter inch flame bit and the half inch flame bit to do the majority of the artwork just to kind of give you an idea on how to get started with that. Then the next tools you guys will want to use is either an angle grinder with an 80 grit disc or a good sander with some 80 grit paper. Now this really applies if you're using rough cut. If you're using dimensional lumber and it's sanded, you don't really need to sand it anymore. This piece is going to get weathered and beat up outside. But if your wood is weathered like the wood that I'm going to use and it's really rough and things like that, you're going to want to clean it up. So a lot of us already have this for carving. So this is an easy tool to grab and you just work it back and forth sanding everything down. I'm not going to use that today though. I like to use my six inch orbital sander here from Rigid to clean everything up. I get a little bit nicer finish. I get a little more control out of it. We'll sand the ends. We'll sand everything down real quick and then we'll get into uh, you know drawing some art on it. So the first thing I want to do though is take the saw and I'm going to go ahead and cut these off. So next thing we're going to do, kick it in high speed and get these all sanded down and ready for some artwork. Alright guys, so we were outside working on the bench, making a few cuts, kind of getting the backrest ready for some artwork. I had to take off. I wasn't able to finish the video and so I've moved the backrest here inside the shop to uh, finish working on it as we are getting some rain today. And uh, yeah, the plan is to draw out some artwork, kind of give you guys just an idea of what you could do with your own. Really, it's up to you. This is going to be uh, your work, your project, your benches. So use your own design. I'm just kind of hoping to give you some inspiration on how you can uh, create your own, you know, kind of get the juices flowing and get you thinking about what you could do on these. Now, what I like to do is I'll study some silhouette pictures online, silhouettes of trees, the mountains, bears, uh, moose, deer, whatever it is that I'm going to do. Now, today we're going to be working on doing a bear on this backrest. And so I will start with my pencil if I can actually see it. Sometimes it's tough to see the pencil marks when the wood's already like this and it's all gray. But as long as I can see my pencil marks, get it drawn on the way I want it, I'll go over it with a permanent black marker or just a black marker. That way, as I'm carving, I make sure to not go past the line and I can see every little spot that I want to carve out. Now, like I said earlier, I'm for, for the purpose of this video, and I know a lot of uh, the new carvers and people watching are now getting die grinders, getting our flame bits from Sabertooth, right? the half inch and the five eighths. And 
that's what I'll use to kind of create the art in here. Now, if you take it a step further and you have a router or you get yourself a router, that makes the sign making that we're going to do here, the art that we're going to put in this backrest, a bit easier because there's not going to be a ton of detail in it. It's a silhouette. So all that means is we need good lines and then we have to take away all the meat from the inside. With a router, you can just zip right through it and you're done. So again, I'm going to get a design drawn up on here and we'll start with these tools and go through and just do some of the work. I may finish it with the router. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw it on. Okay, so there we go, we got a bare silhouette. Now this will be the same idea for doing the trees and maybe some bear tracks, you know, look up some photos and just, just draw them on, you know, like some bear tracks, they're really not that hard. Well, that one looks pretty bad, yikes. I said they're not hard and then I go goofing them up. You know, that's like that pad, you can do one, two, three, Five toes, you know, line them up the way you want them. Now all the tools I'm using will have links down below. I've had people say, I don't see any links under your video. I can't find the links to Amazon. What are you talking about? So if you got the video up, right, you guys are looking at the video over here. There's an upside down triangle under the corner of the video. Follow over the video down to that lower right hand corner, okay? It says subscribe. Just below that, there's an arrow, an upside down triangle. You hit that and a drop box falls. And it'll be just above the comment area between the video and the comments. In there is where all the links are to the tools and things that I use. So if you can't find them, that's, that's where it is. Um, I'm going to put this stuff on and basically just start going around cutting my bear out. I don't want to, you know, like cut through the black line, but I want to follow that line and start removing material. All right, guys, so you see how quick that is real time we're carving away, right? When you get in here and you're going in like this and you're starting to cut into the meat, you need to be careful. Keep your bit moving. There's times you're going to stop. And if you dig down too deep, you're going to get that death wobble and this thing's going to jump all over your piece. There's almost no controlling it. So it's important to keep it moving, right? You finish that line, come back through, make that line a little wider before you go any deeper. If you go too deep, it'll smack across both sides. It's gonna jump out of the workpiece, potentially catch your hand, which you should have gloves on, but I don't this morning, so I know, shame on me. But just, that's a little thing to, you know, just think about. So basically you go through and do all these lines like this. And you can take the bigger bit to remove some of the material. As you saw, we took the half inch and started here. We're going to take that 5 eighths and just start removing more of the center material. Not so much next to the line, but the material in the middle. So 
So there's our bear coming together. I mean, I think you guys get the idea. Come over here, I'll show you guys the, uh, the tracks. I just used the half inch. We got that track cut. Let's go ahead and work on a tree. See, that made pretty quick work at doing that tree, right? Not bad. I mean, we routed out the bear, so carved out the bear, sorry. So using this die grinder and a couple saber tooth bits, and you guys can really just, you can carve into the wood this way and create all kinds of stuff. What I'm going to do is click the cameras in high speed. I'm going to finish carving all this stuff up. I was going to go ahead and use the router, but like I said, I think everybody's going to be using this setup, everybody that chainsaw carves. And, uh... Yeah, I think I'm going to finish all the carving with the die grinders, and then we'll get into hand painting, and I'll show you guys the finish, what I put on these for a finish to help seal them and protect them from the weather. So don't go anywhere. We're going to kick this thing in high speed and uh, get the artwork done. We are, everything is carved up and it's time to do some paint. Again, I'll kick it in high speed when I paint it because who really likes watching paint dry, right? But all I'm using is just, you know, a brush and black apple barrel matte acrylic quick drying easy cleanup paint. It's a water-based paint. This is what I use for this kind of stuff. I always do. Um, I'm going to get in here and just paint inside everything we just carved black now i had a couple of those death wobble spots right here it jumped out of the art got me up here on his toe those things happen you got to just be paying attention and try to control it when it does again keep it moving and try to you know it'll take a little bit of practice i mean i still goof up but what are you gonna do so let's click it in high speed get the paint work done and then uh, we can start talking about finish All right, guys, so the paintwork's done, and as this dries, I figured we would talk about finish. Now, the finish I'm going to use on the bench and the backrest and the whole piece is the same finish I use on all my outdoor carvings, my bears and all that stuff you guys usually see me carving up here on the channel. And what I like to use is the Minwax Helmsman, this can right here. There's one that has blue up here. That's water base. I don't like using that. If you use that acrylic water base to cover your whole piece, and it doesn't dry thoroughly, your piece will turn gray or white or foggy looking when it rains or it's cold. I don't like that. The oil-based stuff, which is this one right here, Spar Urethane, Indoor Outdoor Helmsman, Minwax Helmsman, Indoor Outdoor Spar Urethane, doesn't do that, all right? If you put it on in cold weather, you're gonna have issues. If you try to put it on in the rain, you're gonna have issues. So you need to have dry weather, you put it on, you let it dry, once it's dry, it's ready to be out in the elements. Now, I mix up my own little mixture for this. And what I do is I get 
some mineral spirits odorless mineral spirits it says it cleans up interior jobs okay and what I do is I get two paint cans so the original and a second paint can usually the one left over from the last can and I'll put half of this half a full can in the new one and then I put probably a quarter of mineral spirits okay so it's 50 and a quarter roughly of mineral spirits I stir that up really well and I brush that on I'll put on anywhere from two to three coats of that mixture now I don't mix both cans at the same time I only mix one with the mixture and leave the other original why because some some carvings some orders from people they want a thicker coat they want a heavier coat so I'll put on two three coats of the thin stuff that soaks into the wood really well and then once it's all dry I'll go through and put on one or two heavy coats for custom orders if that's what a customer wants just so you guys you know now as far as the paint goes right because this is a acrylic water-based paint it doesn't mix with the oil base okay so that means you shouldn't get bleeding and all that going on with the color into the wood and all that jazz what's gonna happen is once this paint is dry it has to be thoroughly dry I will sand the whole piece down to get rid of any spots where I over painted and then we would brush on the mixture okay you put on that first coat it usually takes anywhere from 8 to 10 hours to dry it just it does it takes forever okay I will put it on and I leave it for the day I don't even come back to it till the next day unless it's a really hot day you know I check it see if it's tacky if it's tacky don't put on another coat you want that to be dry if you start putting coats on when it's tacky they will just keep soaking in and soaking in and the thing just feels like it never dries so I let that first coat soak in really well and dry the second coat starts to build and if I do a third coat it really starts to build and then again if I want that super heavy coat I'll put it on straight now like I said it will just paint it'll it'll bleh, the clear coat will just go right over that paint without an issue we're gonna let this dry and when we come back we'll sand it down and I'll start putting on some of the finish and you guys can kind of see what that looks like Paintwork has dried and now it's time to sand it down before the finish. I like to use my six inch sander from Rigid for this. I usually just use like an 80 grit, keeping it kind of rough. Uh, it doesn't really need to be perfect. You know, this is going to be outside in the elements. It's a chainsaw carved bench. And so I don't take a ton of time to refine this piece and put a ton of time into sanding it because I'm not going to get my money out of it. If it's a custom order and they want a really super smooth finish, then that's a different story you know we'll take more time we'll go through the grits we'll sand it down really nice and clean and and do all that extra work but in this case this is just to go to a store and I'm not gonna make my money back on it for spending a couple hours just sanding so you guys can use the six inch a five inch you know just an orbital sander with some good sandpaper this piece is pretty shot but I'm gonna use it anyway because all I want to do is clean up the marker lines and the edge of the carving and the edge of the paintwork. That's mostly what we're going for here. Now, if you guys don't have a sander like this, an orbital sander, you can use your die grinder with some 80 grit flat disc on there, okay? The only thing with the die grinder is it's spinning super fast. And if you're not being careful, you could just sand away all the work you just did. You can sand right down in the wood and get rid of your trees, part of your bear, or your tracks. So with an orbital sander it'll take it away much much smoother so let's sand this thing up real quick and uh get ready for some finish all right so we got everything sanded i've got myself my hard bristle brush here the helmsman we were just talking about now these brushes you guys can keep reusing i just threw out a brush i've been using for probably six months i'm not even kidding six or eight months um, after clear coating carvings and benches and signs and whatever I put it in a jar just enough to cover the bristles with mineral spirits rinse it off clean it up and use it again next time if you're lazy and let it sit out it's gonna get all hard you got to throw it away and you gotta buy brushes now these are super cheap you can totally do that but I'm cheap when I can save a couple dollars and don't need to use a, bra a new brush for every carving then you know 
I save it and reuse it. So this is my pre-mixed finish that I told you guys I like to use. I'm also wearing these nitro gloves because I just don't like this stuff on my hands. One, it's not good for you. And uh, two, it's really sticky stuff. I, I don't like it on my hands. So gloves are always a good deal. Now I'm not going to do this whole thing in here because I prefer to do this outside on a nice day so I can do the whole bench all as one. But we're going to go ahead and just put some finish on. Now this clear coat will darken your piece just a little. Nothing crazy. I mean, you guys can see right here, all right, it darkens it. And it's going to darken it depending on the wood you use or the age of the wood. This is pine that's been out, it's been aged, it's gray, it's darker. If it's fresh cut pine, you're going to have a much lighter color to it. Over time, though, it will yellow a little more and it'll become a little bit darker. So in here where the paint's dry, I just brush it in and spread it out. You don't want to leave big, thick heavy spots to dry because that just takes forever it's going to take days to dry and this stuff hardens up but it's not as hard as epoxy so it has some give to it but it weathers nicely in my opinion and if you use this you need to make up sheets for your customers so that they understand one a chainsaw carving or a bench should be placed not directly in the sun or directly in front of a heat source makes it dry out and crack faster and it just it needs to dry much slower two it should be placed on stones or pavers or something other than the dirt or directly on the ground if your carvings or bench are placed directly on the ground they're going to absorb water from the bottom and they're going to rot much faster two customers should know that in order to keep their piece looking nice for a long period of time they need to apply the same finish that you're using, whether it's this or something else. So I create carving care sheets. And basically it explains everything I just told you guys in, you know, different wording, but tells them, you know, you've got a wooden piece of art or carving or bench, and it's important for you to do the maintenance on it. I can do the maintenance on it for you, but it's going to cost this much a year. And it's up to the customer to get the piece to me for me to put a finish on or they can pay extra and I will come to their place and do it. So we can't do things for free if we're trying to make some money, okay? If you're not worried about making money, that's fine. Go do it, spend your own money, give it away and you know, do the work. For me though, time is important, time's precious. I've got a family to spend time with. If I have to take away from that time, then I have to be compensated for my time. And that's just, if, if you're going to run a business, if you're going to make sales, if you're going to do those things, those are things you guys have to think about. Now, I know that's kind of directed to those of you just starting to carve and maybe just starting to make some sales and things. And it might not apply right now, but it will apply down the road. It'll be something to think about. So that's that. This is, you know, the bench, guys. Um, just kind of throwing in some little advice, little tidbits here as they come to mind. Now again, I'm not going to sit here and clear coat this whole thing as I want to make up some other benches and I will clear coat them all at once. But you guys can get a, uh, a general idea here of what you're looking at, what you're doing. You know, in the last video we made the bench and carved it up. And this video was basically supposed to be 100% completing the bench, but I don't want to put a video out that's, you know, an hour long. We'll keep it kind of short because I think we've covered all of this stuff. Now, the side pieces to the bench, right, that hold the seat and hold the back, I'm not going to sand those down. I had talked about, you know, how I was going to finish them earlier. All I'm going to do with those is I'll hit them with my turbo torch, burn them lightly, hit them with a stiff bristle brush, done. Clear coat them, call it a day. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to uh, carve anything special in them. I'm not going to do any of that. But you can if you want. You know, you could put bears in the sides. You could put tracks, trees. Or just leave them. Um, just some ideas for you guys for your benches in the future. If you guys missed the tutorial on how to, like, create the bench, I'll have it popping up right here or at the end of the video. You guys can go there and check it out. If you guys want to use the tools that I use, my saber tooth burrs, the die grinders, things like that, I will have links to those through Amazon in the description below. Go to the lower corner of your screen, the lower, let's see if you guys are watching, it'd be your lower right hand corner. 
There's an upside down triangle. Click that and it's a drop box. In there is all the links to social media, my store where you can purchase my work, Teespring where you can get t-shirts, coffee cups, and stickers, and links through Amazon. Any purchases help support the channel, you guys. A lot of time goes into making these videos and any purchase you guys make is awesome and it, it seriously is appreciated. I don't make a ton of money on these videos, even though there's commercials. You have to have a lot of views to really make a lot of money to make it worth it. But I make these videos to help you guys out. And so if you guys want to help me out in return, you can follow those links, see a bunch of different ways you guys can do that. And uh, like I said, I thank you in advance. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys have questions, comment below. You guys can always contact me through Instagram. Message me through that, you know, privately. If you have a question, you want to share your work. I've been working on a beginner carving video. I've only got a few photos. So if you guys want to be able to... Uh, be in that video, send me some more of your work. And if you can, in those photos, put your name in there, you know, put your name and where you're from if you want, like country or state. I don't need an address, you know, just a country or state would be cool. And I will work on trying to get that video out. I've been talking about it for a long time, but we just haven't, I just I think I've got like five people interested in doing it and it's just gonna make like a two second video. So, you know, if I don't get anything from anybody after this video goes out, then we'll just make that one and put it out there. That whole goal of that video though is just to encourage beginner carvers, new carvers, people just starting out to see, you know, this is where everyone starts. This is These are ideas and just kind of encouragement, you know. Hopefully this video was good. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Have an awesome day and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.